it's a good day for slinging some poo. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. So I was really hoping we would get done with manure today. I got to haul a couple loads over to where I've been spreading and then back on that field there. But we decided to add one more field. We got a lot of manure in our pens. We're like, ah, we got plenty. That field needs manure. So instead of having like 25 acres to go, I've got 55 acres to go. And that ain't gonna happen all in one day. We actually had a really good day yesterday on the planter. Um, got someone headed down to go get all the parts for it from Kansas, because like I said in the last video, <laughs> you gotta drive to find this stuff. Um, but found out our deer salesman is a hell of a lot better at running Google than Cameron and I, because he was able to figure out how to get the GPS talking with the case display. He had to go in, let's see where is it on here, come in here to serial port and change a lot of stuff in here. None of, none of us have any idea what it means, he just found a YouTube video. But what made me laugh is I called... 21st century's dedicated tech support guy or their phone line to their experts because there's multiple of them the best he came up with is while it's running do a hard reset where you unplug the monitor and plug it back in and if that doesn't work we got a problem with our globe I, I don't think he knew a whole lot about making the tech talk to each other because that was 20 minutes on the phone and that was all the more we got so great tech support there but like i said getting the parts today so hopefully by this time tomorrow if we wanted to we could be planning but things that we're still manuring and ripping and cult packing we aren't even ready for the finisher which we got to go get with this tractor when i finish manure run the finisher across because colch packer is nice breaks up all the clods but it doesn't leave that great of a uh, planting bed we got a new finisher sitting in town need to go get run it across then we're ready to plant oh and cameron and i are going to be gone this weekend so yeah planting starts next week i think <laughs> and then just to add a little bit of frustration to it colorado springs got a really big rain snowstorm over the weekend. Our canal at our head gate, 100 miles that way, is running at max capacity. Just shot, well, almost max capacity. Running a little under a thousand cubic feet per second. So think of one cubic foot, one by one by one. A thousand of them per second going through our head gate, which means we're gonna have water everywhere. And we got, I guess we can finish the wheat and make sure our baby hay survives and Make sure last year's new hay keeps going. But we got no corn in the ground. And it's, it'll be May. Oh well. So Bart and I were joking about that planter. The drive shaft's 20 foot long. They could have easily put a coupler in the middle, made it two 10 footers. It's at least fitting a pickup instead of a trailer. Well, I got laughing. I go, well, one of these days, one of these bearings on this guy's gonna let go. And this is a 30 foot drive line. No splices the entire length of it. That'll, that'll be fun one of these days. Cameron's greased up and out of here. I'm done greasing, but I need to blow out the radiator because I haven't done that in probably two weeks. She's a little dirty. Complete grease of the tractor, the spreader, blew out the radiator, air filters. And ran the dog home. Almost 9.30. Not too bad. Hey, Scott Hastings. Nuggets are moving on. They knocked out the Lakers last night. Well, that was weird. We had just ever so light of a breeze out of the south. And then in a moment's notice, it flipped to a decent little wind out of the north gonna kind of screw up grinding Blanca and Hector were getting everything all set up to grind but you kind of want a south wind not a north wind eh, we'll figure it out I'm gonna go back over this way to get around her okay four miles to 
three, four, five turns. This is going to be a very unproductive start to the day. I suppose. Tuna's struggling out here by himself. I can hear the high winds howling. That's weird. Get him! Okay, now I got an empty pin. Sounds like Hector and Blanca are gonna start on our manure, getting it, all of it hauled out. Pen's all cleaned up for the summer before the chaos of uh, spring silage. Plus, we need a, an empty pen for cattle that show up this evening from Lahana. All right, let's go spread this. So as you can see, not much left here, a couple of passes. Um, I finished the small pivot over there on Friday and then Saturday got started on this one with the pile we had here but I had to quit at about noon to go help my son with his class project and build a simple machine and right as we were wrapping that up it started to sprinkle and I was like all right we're just done for the day and then Sunday I wasn't able to spread either because it rained again Saturday night I mean we're talking two to three tenths. It's one of those deals I just didn't feel like putting up the machine. You know, because that top little bit was just stuffed like crazy. So, I got everything I could here yesterday. Got moved. And then, yeah, like I said, I think it's going to take about four loads. Because this is heavier wet manure, so I'm able to get 25 ton on. So I'm hoping I know I need around 450, 475. So, we'll see how it turns out. That is frustrating. If you've ever been around one of these deers, you know, either the fan belt is stretched out and not responding to the variable drive, or vari variable drive is shot. So, that brings up two things. One, can anybody explain to me the benefit of variable drive fan speed as opposed to just a fixed fan speed that doesn't have all the moving parts? Two, I believe last fall, and I'm going to look again at lunch because it's after 11, so this will be my last load with how long it takes. I believe ours is the dry system, which means there is no grease or there is nothing you can do other than change out parts. And I literally just Googled John Deere's video, YouTube video, on maintenance for him. There's pads you can change on the dry system, but there is no lubrication I I don't get it why why do we need a variable fan drive can somebody explain that tractors got along with a plain fan drive for a hundred years and then we had to change it and then a jealousy note Chuck's plan yeah so like I was thinking this is the greaseless style so that's what the little tabs are going across there and that means this guy is greaseless too. So there's nothing I can do other than possibly, I don't know. I need to call Deer because their video on maintaining the greaseless one was pretty piss poor. Before I worry about any of that though, it's 11.45. My wife wants to go eat lunch somewhere. So I'll go pick her up and figure out where we're going. I don't know if you can see on the far side of this pivot over there, Cameron just pulled in to start on that little guy. He just finished quarter circle he was on. Um, I gotta come all the way back for like a third of a load. But it bothers me, so I'm gonna do it. I wanna just leave it, but I, I can't. My OCD is kicking in. Um, got a hold of deer. They are gonna bring out one of their um, these chairs one of their fan belt there we go and think what I was thinking of uh, one of their fan belt measuring tools basically if your belt is narrower than this little deal it means you need a new fan belt and that should make the air go away it's one of those things try and catch it before the belt just disintegrates because then you're SOL 
I asked him about the drive. I go, hey, this one appears as though it's the uh, dry version. Doesn't have any of the grease circs. And he goes, yeah, they got rid of the greasable ones because nobody was greasing them and they were going out so fast. So they upgraded the bearing to a greaseless bearing so that way it would last a lot longer. And then as far as the drive goes, you just run it until it fails. One of those I get it and I don't get it. Oh, and he told me why they have to have variable drive and it's all due to emissions. You know, if you gotta do a regen, they gotta get the engine good and hot, this and that. So there is a reasoning behind doing the variable drive, but it's all because of stupid government juice. Let's just go with that. Let's go reload. And there you have it. Another field done. How many tons did I put out? Almost 500. Puts me about 70 acres ahead of Cameron over there making dust. On to the next one. Just resetting the computer over to this other field. The one thing, and I need to do some more research. I wonder if I can save my numbers. So this field I was on a week ago, somewhere around there. And it's 25 acres, I think I did somewhere around 100, 125 ton, something like that. But it'd be nice if I could bring it back up so that way I could make sure I'm staying pretty consistent on how much I'm putting out. Quick side note, trying to keep baby hay alive. Wonder if any of it's up yet. The wheat is growing like crazy. But anyway, so yeah. So the field I'm on now from the shop, I gotta come down a mile over half back in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. See how much I can get done. I need about 250 tons, and I'm guessing I barely have 100 ton there piled up and ready. So, let's see how it works out. Just over 100 ton in on the field. It's 10 till 5. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Hopefully some of the guys are still at the shop. Going to come up with a plan for tomorrow. Because it sounds like a massive cattle day, which sucks because we got a lot of field work to do, but cattle's what's making money right now. I didn't run into anybody at the shop to figure out the plan. Last I knew was we were starting here at 7 a.m. We got one load here, then to the blue shop, then to the hill. I don't know if that's still the plan or not. On the other hand, talking with Bart at the shop. Our merger is now in town, so they can start working on the update kit for it that Oxbow sent them. Our swather is now home from being in there, getting all the stuff done to it. There was, I don't know, a couple different updates that John Deere had for it. And all the parts are now here to get the case planner put back together tomorrow, so in theory, by tomorrow night, if we wanted to, we could start planning. We're not going to because we're not ready, but in theory, we could. Well, that's cool. They made a little sidewalk. All right. Guys poured concrete yesterday. This is the first time I've actually seen it. I just haven't come on this side of the hill. I don't know much about concrete, like I said, but it looks good. I got the studs in for the door. Pad ready to go. Hopefully, they'll pour that tomorrow. But yeah, exciting stuff. Be nice to get this enclosed and get all that inside out of the weather. Okay, I'm gonna check Colt's packer over real quick because I think my plan is go home, eat some dinner, see how the kids' day went. I'm gonna probably come out and run this after dark. Let's open the hood, see if we got a bird's nest. Yeah, that one needs a little WD-40. Okay. So on the uh, the 335 we got rid of in the 360, there is a cage that runs the length along here. Might be that one. I don't know. Different engines. But that is where you have to watch really close because that's where... I thought I had all the bird's nest out of the 335 until I seen smoke coming out of the hood whenever I was going down the road. Other big place to watch is kind of right in here. 
So, looks like we're good. I think I'll just take off with this a little after dark. Go see if I can knock out a few acres. Man, I like this hood. That one, as soon as you start dropping it, you better be ready to catch it because it's coming at you 100 mile an hour. <coughs> okay, guys. I'm going to call it a night with you. Mainly because I don't want to drag you around after dark. It'll be past your bedtime. Go to bed. Good chance I'll see you guys tomorrow.